Hello, welcome to Falls from Iron. A little bit impromptu, but we don't operate with a script. Pa! We do away with scripts. We laugh in the face of scripts. We take the script and we put it through the shredder. That's what we think of scripts here. Done. Anyway, thanks for joining us, ladies and gentlemen. As it says on the banner, and as I usually do at the beginning of a stream, I ask you to please don't forget to like, comment on, and share the stream to your social media platforms. And don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't done so already. Make sure you hit that bell icon and you'll be notified of any new alerts of any new content as and when it is added to the channel. And as always, guys, we thank you very much indeed for your support. Now, there was an article that I, I stumbled across, if I'm being completely honest with you. It, it was in, in on the website, the Guardian newspaper. Don't judge me. I'm, I'm not by default a Guardian reader. I know that some people might have preconceived ideas of what a Guardian reader looks like. But it was just something that just literally dropped into my lap. And it was it was quite an interesting article, I thought. And there was one person that sprung to mind that I thought would like to get their teeth into this. And he's sitting in the green room really patiently. And he's he's actually, if those of you that have paid attention in the last couple of weeks, he's actually done a couple of videos on the channel about players from the championship and indeed League One that, in his opinion, should be at least under consideration. So I'm going to bring him in. Um, ben, talk to me. Hi, mate. How you doing? Yeah, I'm, I'm for, doing well. Thanks for um, having me on, mate. No, um, as you touched on just then, um, I was very interested in the article you sent me, strictly because you know, there's nothing I like better than trying to sniff out a bit of a bargain from the lower leagues. You know, we've done it throughout our history in you know to good effect that you know none more my re most recent than uh jared bowen who you know has just got the england squad do you know what i mean so there's there's a good bit of value and a lot of talented players in the lower leagues that i think you know if i'm honest i think that should be our first port of call you know in terms of scouting network um because you know you've got some young hungry talent there that you can probably nick for a good few quid less than you, you could elsewhere. So, uh, no, mate, I, I had, a, had a brief look at the article you sent and look forward to dissecting it in a bit of detail to see who we should be sniffing around. Yeah, and obviously, I, I guess you're not necessarily advocating that we should make every single purchase in the summer transfer window from the championship. But I, I agree with you. I think that there's a bit of value in trying to get the odd signing here if it fits with yeah. what David Moyes is looking to achieve next season? Yes, mate. Yeah, like I think um, the likelihood is, yeah, it, it wouldn't be realistic to buy everyone from the Championship because, let's be honest, that's a bit of a risky move. You know, they're taking a step up. A lot of them might take a little while to bed in. Like, like Again, going back to Bowen, in my humble opinion, it took Bowen a little while to bed in in terms of his final the final ball, his decision making, went to shoot, went to pass. But now you're seeing, you know, the the the, the fruits of giving those young lads an opportunity, mm. mixed in with maybe buying a couple of established Premier League players or players from abroad. You know, it should make up a decent chunk of our transfer targets. Absolutely. OK, well, I'm just going to show the dear viewers at home and uh, just to sort of like recognise we've got Ryan in the chat. Hope you're well. Hammerhead and Sharky and Mr. Walsh. We've got Trini Hammer in there. We've got Happy Hammerette. Charlie's in there. Hope you are well, sir. And uh, who else have we got? Gaza. Gaza, hope you are well, sir. Um, as I say, don't read too much into it, Walshy. It, <laughs> it was just something that popped up. You know, you're sort of like you're scrolling around. You you, you were on the toilet first thing in the morning and you've got your phone. The newspaper's a thing of the past. Let's be completely honest about it. We all do it. And you're there and you're scrolling on. And, it, and this article just popped up. So I'm going to share it with you now. Um, hello, Luke. Hope you're well as well. Um, yeah, I'll tell you, I'll go full screen with this. I'll just get rid of that banner there and and this particular article as i say it's from the guardian and it goes into some detail about players who've made it into the football league's 2021 2022 team of the season and i had a little 
scroll down it. And there's there's some players that have made this particular team who have actually already been promoted. So I rather suspect that the t- that the players that are at teams like just looking there, the first one that you see at the top is the goalkeeper, Mark Travers. Now, Mark Travers is at Bournemouth. He's a young Irish in, um, goalkeeper. He's actually a guy that I've had a little bit of an eye on for a little while now because he made his debut uh, for Bournemouth against Tottenham in the Premier League a few seasons ago, and he was out standing but he um he, he's obviously been promoted with Bournemouth and I suspect that probably he any players that have come up with their parent club may probably not want to to move on I don't know it depends on if if uh, the offer's right but um yeah I mean Mark Mark Travers Ben I mean obviously we've got a, a probably a little bit of an issue at goalkeeper it's fair do you think that maybe Mark Travers might be someone that you'd be looking at? Or do you think the fact that he's come up with Bournemouth might be a bit of a barrier to that? Um, yes, mate. I think that's probably not an area that I'd be looking in the championship for us to strengthen. I think, you know, obviously we'll focus on these guys. Um, but, you know, as we're talking about certain positions, just, you know... Um, identify where I think we need to be. I think, interestingly enough, from the articles I'm reading, it looks like we will try and trigger Ariola's release clause, mm-hmm. which I think we should definitely be doing. You know, Fab, actually, you know, when you look back on the whole season, I've been pushing for Ariola to be our number one. But actually, you can't argue with Moyes' decision to keep Fab in. Overall, he's had a very good season. Um, so I can't really see us going for this lad, Mark Travers. Mm. I think I think Moyes likes an experienced goalie. Do you know what I mean? So he, he likes a few years and miles on the clock. We've got that in fab. If we get Ariola, I, I would like Ariola to be our number one. Um, so I don't think Mark Travers is one we need to be looking at. And also, as you've said, Rob, I think the the likelihood that any of the lads that have been promoted this season, they're not going to leave their club. You know what I mean? They've stayed yeah. in the champ. They've come, you know, they've come up. Why are they going to leave and why they, is their club going to sell them? Yeah, I agree. And and the same applies to the, to the next guy that if you look down from Mark Travers, they go, um, and this guy has actually been linked with us probably for about the last season on and off. Joe Worrell at Nottingham Forest. He's their captain and he's obviously been there for, for many, many years at centre-back. But again, a player that's probably come up with, with, that has come up with his club and probably will look to give his his uh, his boyhood club a, a go in the Premier League. But, but do you think that maybe again, is, is that that sort of like a closed door as far as oh, Joe Worrell is oh. concerned? Or do you, would, is, would that, is that someone that still interests you? I think so, mate. I think um, we've been linked with this lad a, a fair bit over the years. And I think if they hadn't have come up, he's been quite a loyal servant to Forrest. I think he's about 24, you know, you know, mid, mid, mid-20s. And he's their captain. He's really given them a lot of loyal service. But I think I, I like this lad's confidence. I was reading uh, an article and he, he was saying, look, I want to play for England. So he he Good. thinks he's got that sort of ability. And someone who's captain of their club at early 20s, he's a I think he's got he's a big lump, he's got a bit of a presence. I think he's meant to be good on the ball. But I think unfortunately for us, he's a forest lad through and through. And yeah. he's you know, he's just got promoted, he's captain of the club. I think it's very unlikely um Forrest would sell him or he'd want to leave. But just, just just dwelling on Forest a little bit, mm. I actually think it's really good news for English football that Forest got promoted. Um, mm. Strictly because they've got some good young English talent. They've got is it Steve Cooper, the manager? Yes, yeah, he I'm, won the World Cup, didn't he? Was it the under seventeens? This is what I'm saying. He he's got a track record. Obviously, he's worked in the England youth setup. Yeah, he's got a track record of trying to promote good English talent. And I think, look, you've got Worrell, you've got the lad up front, Brennan Johnson. I think yep. you've, got, you've got a couple of lads in midfield that are sort of young English talents. 
And I think it can only be good for English football that these lads uh, are get, showcasing their ability and getting Premier League experience. So I'm, I'm actually pleased that Forrest have come up on that basis. But I Do think... You know, sorry. I'll just, but like I say, just to recap on Joe Worrell, I think, um, unfortunately for us, it's probably unrealistic and uh, we, we won't be after him. Fair enough. Fair enough. But, sorry, Rob, just one more thing. <laughs> Is I think... In terms of centre halves, I think it's looking like. I mean, I don't know Clam so much about him. This lad in <laughs> France, that Agard, Agard, yeah. Is. And I think, I think if we get him in, I don't really think we need to be looking to beef up the centre half options too much. Um, on the basis, you know, we could have Agard, Zuma, Dawson, Ogbonna when he's coming back, Diop plus a couple of the young lads in there. Um, so I don't I don't think centre-half is a... Mm. I, I do think we could do with a real top, top quality centre-half. And hopefully this Agurd is that player. He looks but, decent from what I've seen, yeah. And, and if we get him in, then I, I don't think we need to be looking in the championship for a, another centre-back. So the next guy that's on this particular article is a guy called Dara Lenehan. Is this the play, a player you're familiar with? Because... He's a centre-back at Blackburn, Republic of Ireland International. Um, just looking here, I'll tell you what, I've, I've actually got this one prepared because, as I say, he's not a club that are getting promoted. So looking at this, here he is, Darrell Lenehan. His contract is actually up in the summer. So unless he signs a contract extension, which I think is probably unlikely given that he hasn't done so thus far, he's going to be on a free 28 years of age Irish international and he's the Blackburn Rovers captain. He can play at centre-back, can also play at right-back. And looking here, 41 matches, three goals, one assist for Blackburn Rovers. Is that someone that, that maybe would be on your radar, especially given that he's he's free? I know you're saying about we've got Dawson, we've got Zuma, we've got Og Bonner and we've got Diop, but I sort of look at that position and I think, well, we're not quite sure what version of Bonner's coming back because of the injury. Yeah. We've got Diop, who even when he's played a decent game, he's not he's not sort of like been utilised too much no. more than than sort of like in emergencies. Craig Dawson has done magnificent, and I know you're a big fan of him as as yeah. I am. Yeah, but fundamentally, he's thirty one, thirty two. Yeah. Yeah, no, I got. I know, I know what you're saying, Rob. Um, Dara Lenahan. I must admit, I don't know much, too much about the lad, but I think he's he's late twenties. He's not someone I've really heard much about, um, mm -hmm. other than in this article. And like I say, I think Diop Diop is only going to get better as a centre half. I think at the minute he's good as a backup. Dawson, I still think, you know, he's got – there's nothing to suggest his best years are behind him. Of Bonner, I agree. There's a, you don't know what's going to come back. However, I would say prior to him getting injured, he was probably playing his best football he's ever played in the West End. Yeah. Zuma, good, decent signing, only going to get better. And do you know what, mate? I actually think Cresswell at centre-back um, – and not just in the back three, you know. I I genuinely think when we played Arsenal um, at home, I'm pretty sure he played centre half in the back four when we was real up against yes. it. I thought he was absolutely magnificent. You know, it, it, the 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 centre back position has changed over the years. You know, you don't have to be a six foot four monster to be a good centre half anymore. You know, yeah. you can be. You can be a ball playing centre half and use your experience. So, so generally, I think Daryl Lenahan not really someone I'm looking at to to strengthen our squad. Unfortunately, fair, fair. Just before we continue with this particular article and and the names that have been bandied around as a result of it and your thoughts on them going yeah. forwards, Rob Singleton's joined us in the chat. And if any of you guys have got any names of any players that you want to throw into the mix we'll we'll discuss them no problem at all as we will this one um are you aware of a player at 
Peterborough, Ben, by the name of Johnson Clark Harris. I am indeed, mate. Yeah, and this is uh, it's quite interesting, old uh, Rob, mentioning this lad because this is the kind of thing that I've been thinking we should be doing. Like this is like a a bit of an Ivan Tony Mark II in the respect in the in past years we've tended to try and buy the the Ivan Tony the year after he's gone to Brentford and you're paying 20 mil whereas yeah. you could go the year before you could have got him for half that but you're taking a bit of a risk on a lower league player Johnson Clark Harris I'm pretty sure last season not not the season just gone the season before hmm. he he got about 30 goals in league 1 for Peterborough got him promoted Sounds about right. And, I've got, and I've, I've got to be honest, mate, you know, with the with the lack of options we do have or, or did have up front, you know, going into last season, I was thinking, why don't we take a punt on this guy? You know, if you could have if you could have paid five mil, ten mil for him, between five and ten, it's it's good value and it's a risk, but the, the reward could definitely outweigh that risk. So I don't actually know how many goals he got this season. Is that 12? He's got, according to this in the championship, he played 41 times, 12 goals, three assists. In his career at Peterborough United, he's played 92 times, 45 goals and six assists in total. Uh, I think, uh, uh, to be honest, mate, I think that it, that record in the championship last season, it's nothing to write home about. And I think this guy, he's 27. He's not over the hill by any stretch. He's not necessarily one of the ones that I'm thinking we should be banging the door down for. I, I do think there's a couple of better options up front who are younger and uh, got a better goal scoring record than Johnson Clark Harris. So we'll yeah. we'll come on to them when we um we get to the strikers. Okay. So again, just looking here at this this particular article. That the, the Guardian had put out, putting their take on the on the team of the season in the championship. Again, there's a couple of players there that have gone up with their parent club: Lloyd Kelly at Bournemouth, Jed Spence at Nottingham Forest. Again, for reasons we've already discussed, we probably won't be looking to to those particular individuals. But this is a player that interests me. Again, I'd like your opinion on it. Um, central midfield, Lewis O'Brien at Huddersfield. He, as it says in this article, arguably he was the best player in the playoff final, which obviously Huddersfield came up short against Nottingham Forest. But, but did you see any of his performance? If so, what did you think? Do, do you know what, mate? I, I, unfortunately, I didn't. Um, however... This is an area of the pitch we definitely need to strengthen in the respect of squad number and quality. You know, we've lost Noble. Crow is going. He, he, you know, not really worth a carrot, if I'm honest. Um, so that really leaves, obviously, Rice, Suchek. Lanzini can fill in there. But I just think if we're going to be fighting out on all, all fronts in terms of Cups, Europe, league this is the sort of player we should be looking at in my opinion now i've done i've done a, a video specifically on a lad called john swift from reading uh, a few weeks ago and he he's got some real um attacking stats goals and assists really good he's on a free transfer but this is the sort of guy i think this guy is he 23 is that uh, he is 23 years of age, yes. 23. I, like, like I say, I can't say we need to go out well out and get this guy, but this is the type of player I think we should go for in addition to a real top, top quality central midfielder as well. I, like I say, I think we need a minimum of two in the door. And... If, let's let's just say for argument's sake we went for a Calvin Phillips and got a Calvin Phillips might be a tall ask on the basis Leeds stayed up. I'd want to get a Lewis O'Brien type player as well. He's young. He, from what I can gather, he's he's energetic. And and the one thing for me, they reckon Leeds have been after him after him for ages. They reckon, they reckon when Bielsa was in charge. He'd put in about three bids that had all been rejected for this lad. Now, mm. I, even though he got the bullet 
I really rate Bielsa as a manager. So I, okay. I, I'm kind of of the opinion that if Bielsa rated this guy that highly, he's a player that we should be looking at. Um, because look, I would, I'd like Coventry to get a look in, but you know, he, he, he's unproven. At, you know, he didn't prove it at Championship level, whereas this lad has. So you'd have to say this lad at this moment in time is a better option than Coventry. Um, and who knows, uh, maybe Coventry goes out and does another loan or, or whatever. But mm. it, it, this lad is an Essex boy. He's the right age. He's done. He's done. A, he's done a good stint in the championship. And you know, if you're battling it out in central midfield in the championship, you're you've got you're a tough cookie. You know what I mean? You could you can get put the tackles in and get an up and down that pit. So yeah, I, I like I like the look of this lad. Fair enough. Just to look at his stats, if anyone is interested, and just to clarify your point, Luke. Yeah, don't ever take these valuations at, to to heart. They're uh, they are something of a of an anomaly, but. Yeah, it, it, transfer market, I wouldn't take too much notice of the valuations. They can be wildly out in real-world terms. But look at this. Lewis O'Brien, as, as Ben says, 23 years of age. Colchester was his place of birth. He's a central midfielder by trade. He has, in his career, been deployed in a number of positions. Um, he's been deployed at central, central mid, defensive mid, left wing, centre forward, attacking midfield, right midfield and left midfield, but a lot of those were sort of like just fleeting appearances. Predominantly, he's a central mid and, and defensive mid at a push. In the Championship last season, he'd made 43 appearances, three goals, three assists, and in his Huddersfield Town career, he's got 131 appearances, eight goals, ten assists. Not prolific by any stretch of the imagination, but, as I say, he's, he's more defensive-minded, if you will, in terms of his output. And as we've sort of said, you know, we've got Rice and Socek that occupy those roles. We've, we've all said last season they're, they're playing far too much. We need someone that can come in and rotate with them. Is this guy the answer, I wonder? Who knows? But uh, just something that Charlie put in the chat. I'm just going to wind back a bit because I said about Jed Spence being at Forest and he made a point that he's actually a Middlesbrough player. Yeah. Now, obviously, you know, he's he may well be on loan at Forest and that might put them in the box seat. But I sort of look at that and think, oh, OK, you know, he's he's a wing back and... Uh, I don't know. Could there be any any value in in looking at Jed Spence, perhaps? Not not for me, mate. Just um, I've seen a few highlights of him. I think he looks a talented lad, um, but it's just not an area of the pitch. I think we need strengthening. Obviously, there's there's an argument for both Kufau or Ben Johnson being our number one. Obviously, Fredericks has gone, but yeah. I like the look of Harrison Ashby. I think yep, he agreed. looks like he, you know, there's there's really no... The last thing I want to do is buy someone that stops one of our youngsters progressing into the first-team squad. So, Jed Spence, good good player, and I think he, he will be in the Premier League next season, hopefully with Forrest. I, you know, I hope he stays with with them for, for their sake. But, um, no, mate, I'm, I'm quite happy with our options on the right wing-back slash right back area of yeah. the, the pitch. Fair play. Uh, just looking here, Ryan's put a comment in. Uh, boys was talking to Yeovil Town's new, manage, no, new manager, really nice bloke, and he was telling me about a kid in their youth team called Ben Jarney. Not that one. Uh -huh. <laughs> and he scored 35 goals, goals, 18 assists last season. I, I guess if that's though for the youth team, Ryan, and I, I don't mean to underplay his, his talents and all the rest of it, Obviously, if it's youth team football, there's there's many many players that we've we've seen come through our youth team and, and have absolutely ripped it up. I'm thinking Tony Martinez. Now, obviously, Tony Martinez has now gone on elsewhere and he's he's carving out a nice little career for for himself. But 35 goals, 18 assists in youth football, it's it's good at that level. But for me, I think that 
it's possibly to take him from a youth team at Yeovil, no disrespect, might well be a bit of a step into the Premier League. But I wish him well in his career, that's for sure. Um, just looking at this article again, Ben, uh, central midfield, Morgan Gibbs-White. He's He was on loan at Sheffield United from Wolverhampton Wanderers. Is that a player that would interest you? He got 12 goals and 10 assists last season in the Championship. Yes, mate. Yeah, I think um, anyone with those sort of stats who's a young player, you've got to, you've got to take notice of. Um, I couldn't quite remember prior to reading this article whether Wolves had sold him or if he was still on loan. Um, because, you know, I just would have thought a player of his ability would, would be in and around the Wolves team and not still out on loan at the Championship. But I, I think he is still a Wolves player. Um, from the from the article that I read there, the Wolves manager has said that uh, he will be he will be well in the mix for first team football next season. So, I think, mate, if he was available at a reasonable price, yes, I I, I would like to be looking at a lad, lad like that. Maybe in and around, you know, the likelihood is it's probably a mini, minimum of twenty mil. But on the basis of how old he is, it's probably even more than that. Um, so I do think it's a bit of a risk, um, that sort of outlay on a player unproven in the Prem. But no, I, that, I like this lad and I hope he has a good season for Wolves and, and gets a lot of games. But this isn't one player I think we should be pulling all the stops out for. Fair enough. Again, just to sort of give people at home a little bit of a steer on on what he's achieved last season um, in the championship with Sheffield United, 37 matches, 12 goals, 10 assists, as I touched on earlier. Um, but 22 years of age, he, you know, I wish him the best of luck. But I, I think, as you say, he's, he's probably not a player that I think that, that we really need to be looking at. Just carrying on with this article, Ben, so just going back to it. Yes, now, this is, this is a name. This is a name that interests me, and I'd like, I'd really like your opinion on this. Um, he's down here as a left midfielder, but he can actually play as a left back, which I think it's fair to say is a position that we know needs a little bit of work. And that is a young man by the name of Harry Toffolo. Yes, mate. Yeah, do you know what? This is one, this is one straight away that just makes sense, doesn't it? You know, mm. um. He, I think his position is, even though they put him as left mid, I think he's a left back that play, yes. can play left wing back. So yeah. I think he, he is a left back. I believe he come through this, this youth set up at Chelsea. I um, believe so. Let me just scroll down. Uh, he's been at Millwall, Norwich, Norwich under 18s. Peterborough. I'm uh, sure I meant, I'm sure I heard him. He was at Chelsea at some point, but, I'm sure. Uh, but th this is a sort of player that I like. That you know, he's done a stint in the lower leagues. He's 26. He's got a good bit of experience, and he's really improved this season. So I, 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 I do like the look of this guy. I think his attacking stats, fullback is such an important position from an attacking sense in modern football. You know, they have a lot of the ball. They start off a lot of the attacks. And this guy, I see a couple of the highlights, and he, he's just getting so high up the pitch. Um, good good uh, finishing ability. And I, I just think, you know, I'm, I'm definitely of the view that I, I don't think Cresswell is totally past it in the respect. I'd be happy with Cresswell being our number one next season. But fighting it out with a lad like this and letting this guy bed in over the course of a season and then maybe this this chap taking over um, from Cresswell the season after. But I think, obviously, Huddersfield lost in the playoff final. And I think there's going to be a lot of Premier League clubs that are going to be looking at this guy based on his uh, stats that he's produced. And... We're definitely in the market for a left back, aren't we? So this one, yeah, it makes a lot of sense to me. So I'd I'd like to think we we would be sniffing around this chat. 
Yeah, and just sort of having a little scroll down. 26 years of age. He was from Welling Garden City, as I say, left back. Uh, it says here, just to sort of bring this to your attention, his contract expires on the 30th of June. So he will be a free transfer unless he signs yeah. a contract in the interim with Huddersfield or I'm not aware that he's signed a pre-contract agreement anywhere else. Mm. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is a guy that you'd get in for nothing. And, and I know some people would turn around and say, and it's, it's, a, it's a valid question to ask. Mm. Well, at 26 years of age, if he was Premier League quality, wouldn't he have already made the step up? But then I, I look at Aaron Cresswell. I don't think Aaron Cresswell was, what was he, 24 when he Maybe, when he yeah. came into West Ham from Ipswich. Yeah. He'd never played in the Premier League before. Exactly the same situation, exactly the same position. It, I'm not saying that that's, that means that, oh, this this would definitely work out. But what I'm saying is, is that there's no reason why it couldn't. I agree, mate. I think look, everyone everyone progresses at different rates in their career. Not not everyone's a Wayne Rooney and bursts onto the scene at seventeen and pulls up trees. Some mm. people need to develop physically, mentally, tactically, and if this guy's a free transfer, look, the, you know, I think it, it'd be a shrewd signing, um, and it's. Again, you're you're going to get a player in who's hungry. He ticks a lot of boxes. He's going to be hungry to show that he's good enough to play in the Premier League. So I think this would be a wise signing. I'm sure there's a lot of other left-backs out there throughout Europe and the world that we're interested in. But on a free transfer, on, I'm sure, relatively modest wages, I think this would be a good, very good purchase. Yeah, I mean, just looking here, he's, he's he had 22 matches deployed as a left back in the championship last season, 19 matches left midfield. So he's got that versatility in his locker. Three goals when he was played at left back, three assists. And when he was played at left midfield, another three goals and another four assists. So he's, he's a busy player in whichever player, whichever position you put him in. Exactly, exactly. And I think, um, then that left side of the pitch, Mashuaku, we know, is a bit of a liability. Cresswell was getting on. Uh, you know, I, I'd be even inclined, if we if we bought another left-back, not Harry Toffolo, I'd still be inclined to try and get this guy in because I, I just think modest wages, a free transfer, you know, this is, this is a good signing to beef up the squad when we've got a busy European oh. campaign. Charlie's just said they have a 12-month op option. Okay, that's interesting. As I say, it's got here, contract expires June 30th, 2022. But if they've got an option for an extra 12 months, I'm I'm guessing that's something that the club can can bring to bear rather than one that he can trigger. I, I'm just going to have a little look. Ah, yeah, just looked here. Uh, club option one year. So, okay. So, we'd have to, it wouldn't be a free transfer as it turns out. Cheers, Charlie. Yeah. Appreciate that. Um, but even so, you're sort of dipping into a, a championship club with a player that's got a year left at 26 years of age. I don't think he's going to command a massive fee, in all honesty. No. No, I think um, even, even I would think maybe five mil is a, is a reasonable price. Um, but look, this, this lad, from what I've seen, he has got the engine. He, he has got an engine. And he's well experienced. He's at a good age. He's only going to get better. Um, exactly. So this is the sort of player we should be looking at. And uh, I think he's a, a good player. Just to cover off your point, Darren, about um, Bassey and Hickey. Yeah, I don't disagree. But the purpose of this particular stream is, is purely to, as I say, this was an article that I saw in The Guardian let me just get it up on the screen for you because you might have come in a little bit later in the day. It's an article I just saw in the Guard in the Guardian. I'm not a Guardian reader by default, by the way, but it's it's players that made the championship or their championship team of the season. And I just thought it'd be quite interesting to go through it and see if there's any players that might be of value. So Bassey, 
yeah, not saying that he would be a bad signing. Hickey, not saying he would be a bad signing. But this episode is purely concentrating on this championship team of the season. And there's there's no apology necessary on your part, mate. You, If you didn't know, you didn't know. Um, before I get on to the next one, I'm just going to, um, because I've just starred this comment from uh, Memes. Is Aguerd close? Uh, in answer to that part of the question, from what I've been told, He's apparently had photographs in the club shirt, which I always think is really? dangerous, you know, given what happened to Paul Lintz all those years ago. I always think, oh, you, you really shouldn't do that. But I've been told that they've they've done photographs of him in the club shirt and all the rest of it, rightly or wrongly. Second question, is Basuma an option with that crossed hammer sign? Well, is he an option? Yes, in my opinion, he is an option. But the crossed hammers, from what I'm told, shouldn't necessarily be read into it. That He's definitely going to be a West Ham player. And I take you back 12 months to Christian Benteke, who at the time was out of contract at Crystal Palace. And there was a photograph he put on his Instagram or whatever. And he put a pair of crossed hammers there. Well, he never came to West Ham. And I've been told latterly it's some... Apparently, the crossed hammers, I believe, and this could be incorrect, but someone has told me it's got some sort of anti-slavery messaging behind it. So the crossed hammers, if that's the case, is not necessarily indicative <laughs> that he's going to be coming to West Ham. So there you just, go. Just, just um, and look, not not trying to poo-poo anyone's comment. You know, who's this? Is it Calvin Bassey from Rangers? Yep. Mm-hmm. Had anyone even heard of him before they played in the uh, European Cup final? Yeah, I think I think probably a lot of people would maybe not seen him up close and personal. Not, yeah, and look, I'm not I'm not poo pooing anyone, but I, I'd never heard of the guy, you know. And I'm not I'm not saying he's not a good player, but I just think one game doesn't mean we should go out and sign someone. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I just. Uh, I think he'd had a good run in Europe, it's fair to say. I mean, Rangers had done really well. Obviously, they played, what, Borussia Dortmund, Leipzig. Oh, Obviously yeah. Obviously fell short against Frankfurt, but then again, so did we. And, and, and to be honest, though, mate, I, I know, and this goes against what, I, what I've said about the right-back position. Mm -hmm. If there's anyone from Rangers you'd look at, it's, who, who's, who's their right-back? James Tavernier. Yeah. James Tavernier. I mean, Jesus Christ, his numbers are incredible. He, his goals and assists are, are out of this world. So I think if you was ever looking at anyone from Rangers, personally, it'd be on the right-hand side rather than the left. But, you know, maybe Calvin Bassey is the answer. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, he, he, he's, he's young. He's strong. He's He's got the versatility in that he can be deployed either as a left centre-back or a left back. And of course, I think it's fair to say that we need a player to cover in both of those positions. So there you've got a player that can cover both of those positions. So you've essentially got two players in one, I guess. Yeah. I'm just so... finishing off my kebab, guys. So No, no, no. no you, I, you, you crack on with that. Um, again, another couple of players here that have gone up with their parent club, but did you? I mean, were you a fan of either Brennan Johnson or Alexander Mitrovic? If they hadn't have got promoted, would they have been players that you'd have been seriously looking at if you was in the hot seat, Ben? I think Brennan Johnson, yes, obviously his age, his pace. I do think we do lack pace in our team. Mm. I think that you know we we've got some good technical ball players, but I think sometimes in behind and just a bit of pure unadulterated pace, you know, Bowen's quick, but he's not electric. Do you know what I mean? He's more, he's more constant running rather than he's going to, he's going to knock it past someone and just do them for pace. Mm. Uh, Antonio's pretty quick, but in short, sharp bursts and he's knocking on. So I think Brendan Johnson on, on, on his goals, his goals, his, his pace, his direct running, that would have been one I would have been looking at. But actually, I, I do think that half the league, half the Premier League would have been looking at him. Do you know what I mean? It, would, yeah. it, it wouldn't be like a an unkept secret that no one knew about. And, you know, again, they've come up. You've got no chance of prizing them out of Forest. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, why, why would they do that? They've, 
They've they've knocked their pipe out to get up in the prem, and they're not going to let their star player go for, for any amount of money. So um, he's going to stay there, I would suggest. Well, you say that. Just the, the only thing that I think could be a fly in the ointment, and again, I don't know if there's any options or anything else, but just looking here, it says his contract expires a year from now. So if yeah. if they don't extend his contract, they've either got to sell him now or they lose him for nothing this time next season. And but if you... they go straight back down, which is, if we're being completely honest about it, is more likely than not. It, it yeah. could well be that they may be... They've, they've got an asset that 12 months ago they could have cashed in. They didn't, and they've ended up having, waving away for nothing. Yeah, but I think the likelihood is, mate, they're, they're on the crest of a wave, and anyone that's out of contract anytime soon in Forest, I think you'll find that they'll be signing an extension this like imminently, whether that's for two or three years, just to wrap them all up. And, and uh, you know, there's no doubt about where they're going to be in a year or two's time. So hmm. I wouldn't take too much sense of that. Just want to say I'm um, in recognition of our Czech lads. <laughs> I'm on the bus bars today. This is, this is for Kufau and Sue Czech. Thanks for your service. And thanks for the bud bar. It's a bloody good beer. Well, I'll tell you what, when we get to the, uh, he says touching wood, the Europa Conference League final next season, Ben, you and I are uh, hopefully going to be going to Prague, aren't we? <laughs> oh, a one, one million percent, mate. Yeah, yeah, we, we'll be there. We'll be there. And we'll go to, we'll, we'll be at a few little places along the way as well. Hopefully so. Um, as I say, Mitrovic, he's got promoted with Fulham. We, he was absolutely unbelievable last season. 43 goals. Absolutely ridiculous. But this was a, he's been in the Premier League before. And let's be completely honest about it. He's absolutely ripped it up in the championship, but he always seems to falter in, in the Premier League. He's obviously been linked with us in the past. And there are some people that think he'd be a good fit for us. I'm not one of them, but I don't know. What, what's your thoughts on Mitrovic? I agree with you, Rob. I, I think, um, I think he's a good player. And, um, I think in the right team in the Premier League, he probably will nick nick upwards of about ten goals. Do you know what I mean? But I think that's yeah. I think that's about his cap in the Prem based on, you know, it's not like he's never had the opportunity in the Prem. He's been at Newcastle, he was at Fulham when they was in the Prem. Yeah. Um and it, he seems to just find it easy in the championship. Yeah. But not so easy in the Premier League. You've got a better, you know, he's obviously getting less chances. He's up against better quality defenders. Um, no, the, at his age, I, I, I just think he, you know, good luck to him. Stay at Fulham. You know, he'll get his 10 goals, you know, about 10 goals this season. They'll go down again and then he'll probably nick. 40 goals in the championship in yeah. two seasons' time. And then that's that's just the sort of player he is, I think. Yeah, I mean, I think everybody sort of like put it in the chat that with all due respect to Alex Mitrovic, he's a fantastic player in the championship, tears it up, comes to the Premier League, and you've got to say on the basis of the evidence thus far, when he's been in the Premier League, he's not been anywhere near the same player. Now, I appreciate that 12 months from now, he might have had a stellar season in the Premier League and we could look like a bunch of prats. Yeah. But the evidence isn't there to support that particular no. narrative. So, yeah, I mean, Mitrovic, I know he's been mentioned with linked with us in the past, but yeah, for me, I just think, no, no. But uh, I'm I sure mean, he'll, he'll do well for Fulham next uh, the season after next in the Championship. Rob, just um, staying on Mitrovic... Mm -hmm. uh, if you just scroll back up, and maybe you wanted to touch on this after, but Go for it. Um, obviously they've mentioned a couple of other players in there saying about or, ordinarily Joel Perot and Ben yep. Brereton Diaz would have been in with a shot. Now, Brereton Diaz is the one that um, mm. I like the look of, uh, strictly because uh, when I've seen him, he well, I remember watching him for Nottingham Forest. Uh, years ago, um, and he was a young lad. I think he might have been 18, 19. And I think they might have been, I, I think they might have played like Arsenal in the cup, or they had a Premier League team in the cup. And I think he scored 
and and he looked a talent at a young age, and I don't think he really kicked on like that they hoped he would. But you know, he's still young. I think he's still early twenties. And let, let's be honest, when he was called Ben Brereton, he yep. couldn't get a cow's ass with a banjo. As soon as he <laughs> stuck, as soon as he stuck Diaz on the end of his name, he's turning a fucking Ivan Zamorano. And he's just, he's grown his hair. He's got a bit. He looks like me. Yeah. And that's why I want us to buy it. <laughs> you, you were a better footballer. I remember seeing you play. You were a better footballer than him. <laughs> no, but I'll tell you Maybe what. not as a centre forward, admittedly. You were more yeah. central mid, weren't you? I was, mate. I was. But what, what I will say is, I think Brereton Diaz, I really like look of him. 20 goals in the champ. Um, he's quick. He, he's, 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 he's got a presence. He's a bit of a lump. He's actually deceptively quick. He's a good finisher. And I I think we need two strikers. Yeah. So we've got Antonio. We need, we need one other, I, I'm talking, in my opinion, top stellar quality striker. I don't know who that is. You know what I mean? Maybe it's like Jonathan David or one of these people elsewhere in Europe, uh, 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 Darwin Nunes, you know. So I, I'd like us to go for a real, not a, I'm not saying just a name, but I, I'm fed up with people saying we need someone as backup to Antonio. No, I want someone better than Antonio that yep. makes Antonio the backup or, or makes a, a or difference. Or puts him on the left the wing team. or whatever. Exactly. That m- ch- mixes it up a bit. Yeah. So I'd like us to go for a big... Stella signing up front plus someone like a Brereton Diaz because I just think we need two with the amount of games we're going to play, loss of form. Look, at the end of the day, I do, I like Mikel Antonio, I always have done, but towards the end of the season, you cannot have your main striker going 10, 12, 13 games without a goal and just not having an option to come off the bench, which we mm. just didn't. We didn't have anything to mix it up. And I just think if you, you've got the amount of games we've got in Europe, in the Cups, Brereton Diaz is your man's come in and rotate and mix it up. The only thing I would say, and I, I was thinking this as Charlie sort of put it up, is he did start last season like an absolute runaway train. But then it the second half of the season was noticeably less productive. Is, is that yeah. a concern to you? A little bit. A little bit, but then that's when I'm saying I'm not putting all my eggs in one basket and saying Brereton Diaz is the he's your only striker. He's our saviour. If anything, he is our he's our backup. You know, so when people are saying backup to Antonio, this is the man. This is the man I think we should go for as the backup, but then get someone else in as the the number one. Um but look again. You know, you can only look on paper and yes, but you, you've got to look at it over the course of a season and say he, he had a very good season, albeit he might have tailed off towards the end. Um, but, you know, he, he I think he was playing games for Chile. He's flying out to South America doing this and that. So he had a spell out with a ruptured ankle ligament there just to go between games 34 and 39. Here we go. So, you know, it could be a case of, you know, he's been out, he's then come back, um, it might, you know, took him a few games to get up to match fitness. But I, I, I like him. I, I, from what I've seen, he, he scores a lot of different goals. You know, he's good in the air. He's good He's he's good on the deck. I, I like this lad. I, I really do hope we go for him. Yeah, I mean, just looking there, I mean, he scored... In the match against Barnsley on the 29th of December, three games without a goal, and then he had two um, matches not in the squad. And I'm reading between the lines, I'm guessing he was probably away with Chile at that point. He comes back, plays three games. Well, the first game he only had a 30 minute cameo, so that's I don't know, you can really judge him on that. Mm. Uh, and he then has 90 minutes against Nottingham Forest, 70 minutes against West Brom. And then he misses the next one, two, three, four, five, six, seven matches with a ruptured ankle ligament. He then cut, has two 45 minutes in the next game against Coventry, 90 minutes against Blackpool, then scores against Peterborough. Yeah. Three yeah. games without a goal against Stoke, Preston, Bournemouth. And then the last game of the season, he scores against 
Birmingham. So, yeah, it, it was a bit up and down. And Charlie's yeah. correct to point out he only scored two goals in that last chunk of the season. But in fairness yeah. to him, there was nine games that he was unavailable for. Yeah. And so it's maybe a little bit a little bit unfair to judge him entirely yeah. on that stat alone. Yeah. Yeah. So, but the no, other I... fella, I mean, you mentioned him there, Joel Pirot, just sort of get his um transfer market yeah. stats up there. I mean, he's um he's uh, hmm. at Swansea. Not again, not a player that I'm overly familiar with. I mean, but you what what have you sort of seen much of this fella? Not too much, mate. No, he, well, he's 22. He's Dutch. Yep. I'm not sure who they got him off. Um, um, I can tell you it was, it's the looks of it, PSV Eindhoven. Wow. Um, no, mate. But but again, how, how many did he get? 22 goals. Uh, you know, 22 goals, six assists in 45 appearances in the championship. I think... I think we've got to be looking at players like this. And like I say, P Piro and Brereton Diaz as the backup option, I, I'd, I'd, I'd like to be looking at those sort of players. I, I'd have to have a little bit more of a look at Piro in terms of how he plays, what sort of um, player he is. But 22 goals at, from a 22-year-old in the Championship is is nothing to be sniffed at, I think. So, fair enough. Have a look. Fair yeah, enough. have a look. I mean, you mentioned. I'll tell you what. We'll just go back to the article just real quick. Um, so Mitrovic, we've dealt with. Um, the only player that's left now. I, to be honest, I don't think that this player is realistic because I don't think he's a player that. I, I, I think possibly he's a little bit too long in the tooth, in my opinion. Um, remember the name Andy Vyman? I do, mate. Yeah. He, um, I remember him at Villa. And I remember him being, um, you know, a, a pretty average Premier League player, to be honest. Yeah. And, nothing and special. Nothing special. And on the basis, he's been in a championship for probably the last five years. That tells you that he, he he was a below average Premier League player, and that's why he hasn't been for a long time. So, yeah, you know, good luck to him. He's obviously done well in a team that hasn't really been that great, and it, it, you know he might be the sort of player that one of the uh, relegated teams would buy, like a Norwich or someone yeah. like that. That they know he knows the league, he, he can score goals in the Championship, but he's most likely going to do quite frankly, jack shit in the Premier League. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I'd, as soon as I saw his name on that particular list, I thought, oh, well, OK, we'll talk about him. But realistically, I like you say, I remember him at Villa. I think he was at City for a spell, wasn't he, before the, yeah. the money really yeah. turned up, which shows you how far back he goes. Yeah. And, yeah, I mean, look, he's, his stats in the Championship, That's I can't stat. argue with him. Four, no, four they're really matches. good. Though. He played every single match and got 22 goals and 10 assists. But... You do sort of sit there and think, yeah, 30 years of age, mm, not really a player that I think. Listen, if we if we brought in Andy Vyman from Bristol City <laughs> at 30 years of age, um, I, I would be looking and thinking something is desperately wrong. Yeah. But here's a player, though, and you mentioned him earlier and you did a, a little hey. thing on, on this fella. Talk to me about John Swift. What, what do you see? as the attributes that you think have, have earmarked him for, for your attention? Yeah, I just think I've always known about this player. And uh, th this is a player who's playing in a team that are, are struggling at the bottom end of the championship. I think they only stayed up on the last game of the season. But he just looks, again, and I, I, you know, I don't want to harp back. And bit, I think Bielsa always liked him. I think Leeds had put in a couple of bids for him in the past. And... Reading had turned them down. But I just... You, you watch this guy's highlight reel from central midfield and there's some amazing goals that he's scored. You know what I mean? He's got real good shooting technique from free kicks. You know, there's one that I see uh, a bit Paul Skull-esque in the respect. I'm, I'm sure someone's hit him out, out to him direct from a corner. You know, you know, hit it outside the box and he's hit it on the volley into the top corner. So I think 
you know, there, there's not many players that can do that sort of thing. And I think he got, um, I think he had about 20 goal involvements this season for Reading from central midfield. So I think he got 10 goals, 10 assists, which... Uh, 11 goals and 13 assists, even better. That's what I'm saying. So I think, and this guy is on a free transfer. He he's is. on a He's on a free transfer. He gets goals, he gets assists. He, he's a workhorse in the middle of the park. So I, I just think on the basis we've, we've lost Noble, we've lost Crow. you know, we need, you know, Lanzini's getting on. Suchek, there's rumours about him going, which I'm, I'm sure are false. I'm sure Suchek isn't going anywhere. But I, I, I genuinely think on a basis, I think we need a minimum of two, potentially three central midfielders just to beef up our squad and our, and our team. John Swift on a free transfer at 26 years old. He's English. With the amount of goal involvements he's had last season, that's a no-brainer of a signing for me that I think we should be looking at. It as well as, you know, your your more tried and tested Premier League or European football operators. Is there any other players from the the lower leagues, Ben? I mean, you, as I say, you you've done a couple of streams lately on the channel. Yes. John Swift, you've mentioned. And yeah. um, I think you mentioned Scott Twine, if I remember correctly. Yeah, so there's there's just a couple of others that I'd like to touch on. And I've touched on them before, so I won't dwell on them. But I think, um, you know, just, just to recap, just to recap on the players we've touched on, the, mm. the ones that... Uh, I'd say there's probably five that... Five that I'd like us to go for, yeah? So... Mm -hmm. We've got, Harry Toffolo is one. Yeah, Lewis Lewis O'Brien is the other that we've touched on. Um, John Swift is the other. Uh, is another in central midfield. You know, I'm not saying we go for both O'Brien and Swift, but you know, one one, one of them. Yeah, Scott Twine is another one that MK Dons League One Player of the Year, early twenties. I think he got. You know, twenty odd goals, ten assists, and again, the quality of some of his, of his goals were out of this world. You know, so he was hitting the ball on free kicks like Ronaldo. You know, he's got that sort of technique where he hits it on, you know, on a certain part of his foot that it just fizzes in. And I just think I, this lad reminds me of like a James Madison hmm. that you know he's going to come in. But you know, oh no, what he's gone to West Brom by all accounts. Oh, oh, oh. he's gone to the wrong West. <laughs> he, should have, <laughs> he should have gone West Ham and he went West Brom. But, oh, uh, but, is, is that definite, Mr. Singleton? Oh, I mean, all, mate. All, 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 all the best, all the best for John Swift, all the best for West Brom. But, but Scott Twine, guys, this is one of them ones where. I think we need to box clever with players like Scott Twine because if if we don't go, for, we could get him now. I'd say he's probably going to cost you in and around ten mil. I think he's gonna he's not going to be cheap, right? He's not going to be cheap. But let's just say you got a Scott Twine for ten mil now. I guarantee you, if the likes of a Norwich bought him instead of us, so let's just say he goes to the Championship. He tears it up in the championship. You're either you're either going to pay twenty million for him in a year's time, or you wouldn't be able to get him because he'd be promoted with a Norwich, and you wouldn't get your hands on him. So this is like I say, when Ivan Tony went to Brentford from Peterborough, if people wouldn't think Scott Twine's ready now, the astute thing for me would okay buy him. And then if you're not going to put him straight into the first team squad in the Premier League, loan him out to a, a Norwich or a Watford to do a year in the Championship, let him tear it up there and hone his craft for another year and then bring him into the squad. So this is where you need to be looking a little bit more long term. But I honestly think Scott Twine, bring him in. He's a good age. He, he's clearly a cut above League One. And 
you know, he's got he's got a lot of ability. He's got a lot of ability. The only thing that concerns me, I don't disagree with you. I think there's merit in your idea of getting a player in from League One and loaning them straight out to a championship club to see if they can hone their craft there and, and take it from there. The only problem that I have is that we're no, not really great on doing our due diligence as far as the right team for a player is concerned going out on loan. I mean, you look at, um, oh, what's his face? Uh, not not, um, not Connor Coventry. The, the Odebeko? Odebeko, yeah. The two players have gone work. out and it hasn't really worked. And I do wonder, is have we loaned them out to the right clubs? Have we oh. done our due diligence? I know what you're saying, Rob, but I think in the case of Odubeko, I just don't think he's good enough. Do, do you know what I mean? He won't yep. he won't good enough for the championship and he, and he isn't good enough for the championship. I think this Scott Twine is a different ball game. He's he's proved he's proved himself in men's football and you know he's excelled in men's football in League One. So he, he's proved himself that he's a he's a real professional footballer. So so much likes him. I I I really like him. I, I think um all you've got to do is watch some of the goals he scored and and it's one of them again some of the goals he scored you could you know if he can hit it into the top corner from 30 yards in League One, he can do it in the Premier League. You know, if you can ping that ball in, you've got that ability. So I, I think Scott Twine, you know, out of all the players I've talked about, even though he's played below the championship, he would be the one that I'd go for above all of them. Because really? I, he, he would, mate. Because I, I, I think he's got the potential to be something special. I really do. You heard it here first, ladies and gentlemen. When, <laughs> when Scott Twine is going out for England... In maybe maybe the Qatar World Cup's a bit of a stretch. Um, the Euros in 2024, when when we win it and he scores the winning goal in the final, and he's he's a year earlier, he's he's come a London Stadium and he's toured it up when West Ham go and win the Europa League and qualify for the Champions League. You can yeah. re re come back to the 31st of May 2022 on Falls from Iron Talk West Ham, and you can go. I remember. Ben saying Scott Twine's the man. <laughs> he was a good player. He was a good player. So, Rob, just just finally for me then, um, the, the only other one, and we've been linked with him a lot, and I've done a video on him before, is Keen Lewis Potter. Um, yes. I think uh, really good. You know, if we could get if we could get Twine and Potter, Lewis Potter, I just think that, you know, Yarmolenko's gone. He wasn't offering much to the squad, in my opinion, anyway. Mm -hmm. But I just think, looking, like I say, long term, these, you know, King Lewis Potter, he just looks, he's a carbon copy of Bowen. Like, he looks yeah, exactly, yeah. The, the way he plays, he just looks Bowen, but right-footed, you know, in terms of he doesn't stop. He's got a good shot on him. Um and he just seems to be so highly rated by every everyone that he plays with or against that you just think him he's too good for the championship. You know, he deserves a shot. Um, you know, I, I think we do need to strengthen in that area. I think, you know, I like I like four nows, but you know, I still think we need to strengthen. Four nows can come into central. Ben Rama, <laughs> I know Ben Rama divides opinion in our fan does, base. Yeah, I, you know, I thought, I thought he was a great player before we bought him. I, I, I think he's shown glimpses of, but he's just not shown enough for me. You know, I just think he can go missing too much. A lot of the time, he don't really fancy it. Whereas, give me, give me a young lad like Lewis Potter in the Boeing in the Boeing mould or any day of the week. And I, like I say, bring him in, develop him, give him the opportunity. And I think this Keen Lewis Potter could, you know, he could be where Boeing, where Boeing is now a couple of years after signing for West Ham. 
this lad could be there, you know, knocking on the door of the England squad, scoring goals. Yeah, and again, he's got he looks quick. He looks quick. I, I think we need yeah, in our attacking positions, if we're gonna buy anyone, that's gotta be the attribute for me we need to be looking at. Obviously, goals. We want them to score goals, but I I want some pace in the team because sometimes you don't have to be playing well. You know, you don't have to be passing the ball around well. If you can just knock it in behind someone and let them run, you know what I mean? It gives the team an option. Um, So, I, I, you know, for me, for me, based on who we've spoke about, I'll be looking at Harry Toffolo and Lewis O'Brien from Huddersfield. I'd be looking at Scott Twine and Keen Lewis Potter and John Swift. Well, he looks like if John Swift's gone West Brom. He's gone to West Brom, yeah. Gone. If he's gone, he's gone. But like I say, if, you, if you've got three good young talents from the championship, complemented by one or two Premier League players and a couple of in and around Europe or further afield. You know, we need to strengthen our quad. Uh, quad? We need to, seven. <laughs> we need to strengthen Get our... Get down the gym. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We need to strengthen our squad. So, um, they're the people I think we should be going for, mate. Yeah. And I just looked at that little on transfer market and unless I've missed something, he played every single minute of the championship last season. So, He's he's obviously he's got no he's you know what it's like we we've got a habit of bringing players in with something of a checkered injury record. I mean there was a I'm I'm on a WhatsApp group on the the Hammers Chat Patreons group and there was a conversation that went on this morning and it, it was it was pretty quickly dealt with to be honest with you. Uh, mm. Alex Oxley Chamberlain was mentioned and I was just like, mm. that's it, mate. Look, and you know you want players that are robust. Like like Bowen, do you know what I mean? Bowen, you know, touch wood, he he doesn't he doesn't get injured much. Do you know what I mean? He's a he's a tough lad, hmm. and and look, yeah, you know, what uh, Troj has just said there, I forgot all about Vlasic. Do, do you know what I mean? <laughs> he, he's I think of, so's David Moyes. Yeah, I think um, Vlasic has kind of gone out of my way of thinking. Willing him to do well. I mean, but the art, you know, from what I can read, I think uh, Moyes might be willing to take a hit on him. And I don't know if we need to pay the full whack anyway, what we owe, because he come from Russia, didn't he? Russia, so yeah. if he's come from Russia, you and you might, you might have only paid 10 or 15 out of what you've owed, in which case you're thinking, well, if we get 10 back, we ain't lost an awful lot. But but you know what? I'm still hopeful. I'm still hopeful that, you know, because some players take a bit of time to adjust. He might come good. You you just don't know. Hmm. Absolutely. Any any final thoughts before we wrap it up, bruv? Um, no, that's about it on, on this subject, Rob. And, um, yeah, thanks for having me on, mate. And we look forward to coming and have a chat about a few other things. Hopefully we can do some uh, transfer business sooner rather than later and we can uh, touch on the players we bring in the door. I t- I t- saying about that, transfer business, I-, I know there's a lot of clubs that have that have announced that they've signed this player, that player, the other player, but the transfer window doesn't actually open for another 10 days, I think it is. Oh. And already I'm seeing people that are jumping up and down and saying, oh, we need to get our business done, which is true. I don't disagree with that. Yeah. But there are some people that are out there that are just completely losing all sense of perspective and saying <laughs> we're not going to sign anyone we're not going to do this we're not going to do that now admittedly i expected us to sign someone in the january transfer window we didn't oh, i got that one wrong yeah. i can't see that a summer transfer window goes by when we've lost noble we've lost at uh, yarmolenko we've lo- lost david martin we've lost fredericks it's very likely that crowd's going back i i cannot see a set of circumstances where all these players go out the door along with various other under 23 under 18s players and we don't strengthen i just can't can't see it I, but he needs to do some some major surgery in the summer that's for sure do, do, do you know what mate um i'm not concerned you know again i'm totally with you i was shocked we didn't buy anyone in january I think we missed a trick in January. And I, 
I genuinely think, you know, there's no guarantees, but you look at what Spurs done. Spurs brought in a couple of players and then they that they steamed and won, got, got the Champions League spot. But do you know what? I think all the talk from Moyes was about he couldn't find the right player. Now, I, OK, I, I will accept that in January, yeah? But I won't accept that in this preseason. He's brought no. in that new. He's brought in that new chief scout. Is it Rob Newman? Oh, the head of recruitment. I can't remember what his actual job title is. Yeah. But so, so basically, he is the man. He is the man that is tasked with sourcing the players we want to buy. Well, he's been in the post for about nine months. We didn't buy anyone in January, so I'm expecting some pucker signings. Do you know what I mean? And not just one or two. Again, we we genuinely need uh, ten would be unrealistic, you know. But we need a minimum of five, up, you know, in between, you know, maybe five, probably six, eight. Yeah, five to eight players, and and that's why, you know, I'm looking at the championship because I'm thinking if you need eight players, you're not going to go out and spend thirty million quid on each player, are you? So you're going to need to nick. Nick a couple of players that are, you know, five mil, ten mil, rough diamonds, a free transfer here. Yeah. So you need to go and do that sort of business in addition to buying your your, your star names. So, mate, I'm quietly confident because the fact is, mate, if we don't buy anyone, if the board don't back Moyes, Moyes will go. Moyes will walk because his, his stock is higher and He'd go, well, fuck this. If you're not going to back me, I'll go somewhere else where I'll get a couple of quid. But I don't think that's going to happen. I, I think, um, you know, for all their criticisms, I think the board will back um, Moyes and we'll get some good transfers in. And if they get a couple of lads in that I've spoke about today, then I'll be happy about that. And um, You'll take all the credit, won't you? I'll take all the credit, yeah. Fucking <laughs> Newman and Moyes were listening to this show. They didn't have a clue who Scott Twine was before I said, and uh, I want I want a signing on bonus if he if he, what, gets. he cut he wants a cut of the deal. I'll tell you what. Before we go, there is one player I, I I'm gonna touch on. I don't know if this is a player actually you're going to be familiar with, but he was involved in the in the playoffs, and uh, he's a player that regular channel. Um, Supporter Kent Hammers, Kent Irons. I'm you, you, you know him. You're ah. you, you ventured across him on Facebook. Yes. I know. Um, he raves about this guy and just basically says this Elijah Adebayo is Mikhail Antonio 2.0. <laughs> um, but he's younger, he's 24 years of age. Just looking here in his stats in the championship for Luton, 40 appearances, 16 goals, four assists. And he just says he's a, he's a carbon copy of, of Mikhail Antonio. And I'd just be interested. Have you seen anything of this fella? Because I'll be honest, I've not seen that much of him. I admit, I haven't. I, I, do you know what? I've I've had a little look at this guy. And yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got a bit of an Antonio likeness in terms of his attributes. I think for me, though, um, even though I like the look of this lad, for me, the one that I like in the in the champ in that position is Breverton Diaz, you know? So I think like, like I said, I, I want us to be going for a real top class European pedigree striker and, and someone from the championship. This Adebayo, I, I, I can imagine there will be premier teams looking at him. If we're one of them, you know, I'd be fairly happy with it. Albeit that I think I'd prefer Breverton Diaz over this guy. Fair enough, fair enough. I'm just going to have a quick look at see if anybody in the chat has uh, put anything in before we wrap it up. Um, brilliant, as we couldn't handle the pressure. I, d I don't know if it was if it was Pat if it was pressure trodge. I think it was more tiredness in a lot of ways. Um, but there you go. Between conference and Champions League next season, we could have beaten Frankfurt. We had just one or two in January, not guaranteed likely. I mean, the difference between us finishing seventh and sixth was two points. You could, you could, if you wanted to really boil it down, you could turn around and say it was the goal that Jesse Lingard got against us at London Stadium. Though, 
it, you know, it's one of those, but there you go. Anyway, I think, um, yeah, you, you can you can you can carve up any season, can't you? And say, well, if Man, you know, if Man United didn't score in the last minute, but then I'm sure you could say the same about us. Like we, we scored in the last minute against Leeds. Well, you know, we might have nicked one there. Yeah, swings and roundabouts. It all evens itself out, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I don't think there's anything anyone in the chat has put anything that we really need to discuss. I don't think, and I'm, I'm not being disrespectful, guys. I'm just sort of, um, <laughs> it's just going through it really chat. quickly. But uh, yeah, no, okay, right. I'm going to wrap it up there, brothers. I say thanks for joining us on this particular episode of Talk West Ham. Uh, and uh, for those of you that are watching, as it says there, please don't forget to like, comment on and share the stream to your social media platforms. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit that bell icon for alerts on new content. And as always, guys, we thank you very much indeed for your support in this matter. Ben, what are we, my friend? We're fucking massive. Come on, West Ham! Come on, you irons! <laughs>